you can get from that can be used, and the memory of that high can be used to help you to overcome uh, the temporary highs that you get from the sugar or the or the, uh, uh, the the other kinds of things that are so easy to fall into, which then can contribute to the damaging effects of uh, diabetes and its complications. Insulin overproduction or hypersecretion leads to high blood pressure, so many things can do this. If you look at the average person and see how much sodium is in their diet, it's 6,500 milligrams per day or more when you only need somewhere around 800 milligrams for normal body function. When you look at all the other populations in the world, they don't have the diseases we have. They don't have the heart disease, the cancers, the hypertension, and all of the medical problems. Their diet is far better than ours. The Mediterranean diet, which has lots of great vegetables in it, and in my travels throughout Europe, you see people growing their own vegetables. You're talking about organic vegetables. They don't use all the junk and the pesticides that people are exposed to here. The other thing I like to look at, and my medical nutritionists at my center deal with a so-called clean type of diet, organic type of diet, where you get rid of the chemicals, the food additives, the sugar. And another thing we talk about is an anti-inflammatory diet. What is that? Inflammation ex is part of heart disease, and, and it also accelerates aging. So an anti-inflammatory diet, get rid of the sugar, get rid of the saturated fat, get rid of the trans fats, get rid of the chemicals and food additives and the pesticides. These food additives are killing our people, and with, the low, with our, what I call our toxic lifestyle, we have a lowered immune system, and that's why we're getting more cancer. So it's very critical that, uh, and one of the things I do at my centers is we look into the diet, not only for a weight, but for glucose management, for cancer prevention, and for anti-aging. So that's the first, uh, so we say, pillar of lifestyle. That second one is exercise, very critical. Uh, people don't exercise enough. The foundation of a good heart disease prevention program really starts with being physically active. Here's what the research shows. The research shows that aerobic exercise with at least a half hour of moderate exercise lowers your risk for heart attack and stroke by 50 percent. Obviously, the more the better, but you have to have at least a half hour. Exercise is a critical issue for health and for anti-aging. A number of studies show that you need some type of cross training, which is aerobics, whether it's fast walking, whether it's a treadmill, whether it's swimming, uh, whether it's jogging, or whether it's bicycle riding, whatever. And then you need to do some resistance training. The resistance training is critical, especially when it comes to insulin problems, which is very prevalent. If you want to use exercise to lose weight, you really have to increase the duration of the exercise, not necessarily the intensity. The problem happens is that when you increase the intensity, what you start to do is you start to in hurt yourself. You pull a muscle, you're not used to doing it, you drop out, you, that exercise cycle that you purchased uh, in your house now becomes a clothesline. So it's really important that you start at a moderate pace. So those are the, the, big, the big elements of lifestyle. Uh, now, what about nutrients? I think lack of certain nutrients uh, uh, are a nail in the coffin for heart disease. And when doctors say there's no information on vitamins, they're obviously lying because they haven't read any of it, and they're misleading patients, and they're guiding patients down the wrong path. I've developed a program of what I call cardio nutrition. And cardio nutrition simply means the use of, of course, diet, exercise, stress reduction, along with specific nutrients, say, for high cholesterol, for high blood pressure, for irregular heartbeat, for fatigue, for diabetes, for prediabetes, for obesity. Uh, vitamin deficiency has been linked with heart disease forever. The nutrients that are specific to the heart, of course, are the following. Coenzyme Q10, critically important for contraction of the heart. Studies have shown that the cholesterol medications all block cholesterol at the point where coenzyme Q10 is created. So the cholesterol medications are bad, they wipe out Q10, can cause liver problems, cramping in the legs. They also might be linked with an increased risk of Parkinson's because they wipe out Q10. Vitamin C, critically important as an antioxidant for the heart. Vitamin C at good levels can help to enhance immune response and kill infection that can be linked with placking of the blood vessels. The vitamin C also can help to reverse the damage in the lining of the blood vessels that's caused by a combination of factors. Even diabetes and smoking, you can reverse some of those changes. Vitamin E is a wonderful antioxidant. 
Natto kinase is a Japanese vegetable that can be used to help to keep the blood a little bit thinner because when the blood gets too thick or the fibrinogen levels are too high, that can add on to the plaque process. In many cases, we'll recommend chromium because chromium can help with sugar metabolism, decrease the craving that people have for sugars. So that's a great way to decrease their desire to add the sugar into their system. And as that sugar goes from your stomach into your blood vessels, can add on to plaque. We may recommend vanadyl sulfate, which has a similar effect. I may recommend using magnesium because when magnesium is low, the smooth muscle around the blood vessel becomes tight. And as you have appropriate levels of magnesium and potassium, you can now have relaxation of the smooth muscles, which can improve blood pressure and blood flow. One of the most important nutrients is omega-3 fatty acids. Reduces triglycerides, reduces inflammation, reduces thrombogenicity of blood clotting, stabilizes heart rhythm, and prevents the increase in sudden cardiac death. Uh, Omega-3s. Just take about two to three grams a day. And omega-3 is very important because it is a, an essential part of the cell membrane. Now all the, the chemical uh, actions uh, that happens in a cell, most of them happen on the cell membrane. So if we don't have enough omega-3, and especially if we eat hydrogenated oils or trans fats, they incorporate within the cell membrane, of course, causes dysfunction. So the fat stomach, the high cholesterol triglycerides, the high blood sugar, and the high blood pressure, if you attack them, you can prevent heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, and many cancers.